Today I want to talk about Blake Crouch's writing advice. I'm a big fan of his work, he writes these fast-paced sci-fi thrillers and they're the kind of books that you just can't put down, I'll link some of them in the description down below. I found a load of useful writing advice from him in a Goodreads Q&A he did a while back, so here's some of Blake Crouch's tips for writers. Number one, I come up with a loose outline that goes at least through the midpoint, and when I feel good about it, I start writing. The outline can and should change as I write and discover new things about the story. This is an interesting point, I think, because he's a great example of a very successful writer that neither falls completely into the planning or the pantsing side of writing. It's an age-old argument or an age-old question with writing, what produces better results if you plan out everything and then write according to the outline or if you just follow wherever you think the story needs to go and make it up as you go along. However, it's not really as simple as that. It isn't just a choice between the one approach or the other. It's a spectrum and every writer is going to be at a different point on that spectrum. Blake Crouch seems like a good example of someone that's halfway between really. He has to have an outline to get the story going but after that he's fine. That's similar to what I do when I write long projects like a novel. I'll plan as much of it as I can and then after that I just see where it goes and see where it takes me. What surprised me about this, having read some of his books, is that he's not an out and out planner. The plots of his stories are really complicated, really complex and intricate, and I expected him to say that that's all figured out in the outline, but to hear him say it's somewhere between I think is really refreshing. It's easy for new writers and writers who are working on their crafts to feel alienated and excluded when they don't fit into one of these particular camps and they feel like they're stranded somewhere in between, but really we're all at a different point along that spectrum and whatever works for you is valid. In this case, it's a little bit of both and I think it's really good to highlight that. Number two, even with the first drafts of my books, I find my characters can come across as thin. It's only in subsequent drafts and drilling down into why I'm writing these particular characters do they start to come fully alive. This is another refreshing insight into the troubles that hit all writers, even successful published ones. Character, I think, is a big challenge for every writer because essentially we're trying to write people and people are complicated and they don't make much sense and they're not logical. So it can be really difficult to make them feel alive and feel like genuine, authentic people. What I like about this approach is that he's highlighting that you don't have to have all the answers on the first draft. You don't have to know everything inside and out and you don't have to know your entire character back to front. You can find their character as you go along. You can start with a couple of key facts about them and as the story progresses you can get to know them better and then you can reinforce that in your editing. I think that's a really good point. The takeaway from this I think is that it's all right if it takes you a while to get to know your characters because you can always go back in and fill in detail if you need to. I really like this piece of advice. Number three, no matter how much you have doubts or insecurities, you can't let it actually affect the work. It sounds cheesy, but at heart you have to believe in the stories you have to tell. I agree with this one for sure. I talk about this fairly often on my channel as well. It's all about the back and forth of confidence and insecurity that comes to all writers. Honestly, I don't think there's too much you can do to avoid that back and forth, but as long as you have that belief in your story, like he says, and maybe it does sound cheesy, but to me it doesn't, but I think as long as you have that throughout and you remember what's good about your story and what the message is or the meaning is or just what you really love about it, I think you'll keep yourself on an even keel. Whatever the case, whether you're writing a flash fiction or a novel, I think you've got to believe that you're writing the story for the right reason and that you're making the point that you really want to make and getting at the thing that caused you to want to write it in the first place. I think that's detectable by a reader as well. They can feel that purpose and that direction in what you're writing. We've all read stories that don't necessarily go anywhere or books that don't seem to have any particular purpose with them and I personally enjoy those a lot less than when I can feel what the author is driving at when I'm reading so I definitely agree with this point and I think it's something that's well worth bearing in mind when you're writing. Number four, I rarely know how a book is going to end until I'm about 100 pages out from finishing. I find this one really interesting. I don't work this way. I tend to always have an ending in mind when I'm writing anything. I tend to, that tends to be the bit that I pick out first and then I write towards that. So even though he says he plans half the story, it's the first half that he plans and then the rest of it he finds along the way, including the ending. And I find that really interesting. It's not something I think I could necessarily do because I need that direction. But again, it's clearly demonstrating that everyone has different approaches to writing. I don't think I've heard too many people say that they could write two thirds of a book, more or less, 
without knowing how it's going to end. That's a really interesting approach, I think. And maybe you're a person that doesn't write off an outline and finds the story, including the ending, as you go along. In that case, it's really, I think, encouraging to hear that other people can do it too, especially with such complex stories as I talked about before. Overall, I think it just sounds like a really fun way to write a book because you can surprise yourself towards the end as well as you might surprise the readers. And that probably would make your book feel less predictable for a reader. It feels like that to me anyway. Perhaps there'd be fewer clues or giveaways about how things are finally going to wind up if the author didn't know for the first two thirds of the book. Again, I probably couldn't work that way, but if you could, then I think there's advantages to doing it. Number five, a lot of my writing method changes from book to book, whatever it takes. This is my favorite thing that he said in this whole Q&A because it makes the most sense to me. I find that nothing is set in stone with the way I write and approach stories. Every single one is different. Every book I've written, I wrote in a different way. One thing I'm perhaps guilty of on this channel is talking a little bit too much about finding what works for you and then writing towards that. Because like he says, sometimes this stuff just changes. It depends on the story or depends on how you're feeling at that particular point. What worked for you previously might not work again. And that's why I talk about learning as many skills and dipping your toe into as many different parts and aspects of writing as you possibly can because you never know what's going to work for you in your next story. It's worth learning all this stuff just on the off chance that your approach just shifts a little bit and you find you need different tools to tell your story. It's also just a really encouraging thing to hear from another writer that they don't know exactly how they do things either and things don't stay the same. Number six, a truly surprising but right ending is one of the hardest things to do. The comparison to air travel is apt. Taking off is easy. Landing the plane, especially in challenging conditions, is very, very hard. This is an interesting point as well. Like I said before, the ending is, tends to be the thing that I think of first when I'm writing the story, and then the rest of the story works towards that. So I don't necessarily have this same struggle that he has when he reaches two thirds point and then needs to figure out how to end. I can definitely understand how that would be difficult. I think maybe the issue with that is that your story has taken a certain shape over those two thirds or the, over the run up to the ending that means it's sort of limited in the directions that you can go with it. Introducing something out of the blue that the reader is never gonna see coming, I think it has the chance to feel pretty cheap to a reader. They might feel a little bit cheated. But if you haven't written the book with clues and all sorts of things that leads to a particular ending throughout it, then it can be difficult to figure out where to go. That's why I think having the ending in mind when you're writing it can inform the choices that you make as you go along and that makes the whole thing seem a little bit more easy to manage. But I definitely think it's difficult to please everyone with an ending. Some people don't like happy endings, some people only like happy endings, some people hate twists at the end and it makes them feel like they're cheated out of the ending. Some people hate open endings, but I really enjoy open endings again. Endings are absolutely one of the hardest parts of writing any story, but I tend to find when the right ending comes to you, you know it by feel. It tends to make a lot of sense and it tends to feel exciting. You just know it when you see it. But if that doesn't happen, there's nothing wrong with trying out multiple endings, even if you're only just planning it and you don't write them all through. Planning a number of them and then tracing the story and seeing which ending makes the most sense, I think seems like a decent approach. And it might help you figure out gaps or downfalls to a particular ending that will force you towards another one. But he's definitely right. Ending a book and landing that plane in exactly the right way is really, really hard. Anyway, I hope this was useful. If it was, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching as always and happy writing.